Hi there everyone. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Today in this video, we will learn about Principles of Network Applications Principles of Network Applications Whenever we develop a network application, we develop two programs that runs on two different end systems and communicate with each other over the network. For example, in the web application, there are two different programs. One program runs on the browser and another in the web server. Network application architectures. There are two types of architecture. Client server architecture and peer-to-peer -peer architecture. The application developer can choose any of these architecture for developing an application. First one client server architecture. In this architecture, we will be having two types of systems, one is server and the other is client. Here server will services requests from many clients. And client will request services from the server. This client server architecture has some characteristics. The server will be always on to serve the requests. In this clients cannot directly communicate with each other. And the server will be having a fixed and well-known IP address. Some better known applications which works on client server architecture are Web, FTP for transferring files, Telnet for remote terminal access, and email. Internet games like Google, Amazon and many others use data centers. These data centers consists of n number of As you can see in the diagram, a client can be any device like smartphones laptops or any other devices dot and these clients will be requesting services from the servers so once server receives the request server will respond to the clients next is peer-to-peer -peer architecture in this architecture pair of intermittently connected hosts are called peers unlike client server architecture there is minimal or no reliance on dedicated servers as peers are directly connected to each other, they can communicate each other. And peers are not owned by service providers, rather the peers are laptop, mobiles which are controlled by users. Some better known applications are BitTorrent, Skype etc. This P2P architecture has some advantages, one is self-scalability. A peer can add workload to the system as well as it can also serve services to other peers. Second one is cost effective. Since there is no requirement of dedicated server, it is cost effective. We have three major challenges of P2P architecture. First one is ISP friendly. As our internet service provider will provide more bandwidth for downstream rather than upstream. Normally peers need to distribute files through the internet service providers. So more load will be applied for internet service provider. And second one is security. As peers are open in nature, they are more prone to security breaches. And third one is incentives. So here peers need to convince bandwidth processing and storage to other peers. Process communicating. As we know two processes runs on N systems and communication happens between these processes. Here process is nothing but a program running within a host or system. Processes running on same host or system will communicate using inter-process communication which is defined by operating system. And processes running on different system will communicate by exchanging messages with each other. Here a sending process creates and sends messages into the network and a receiving process receives the messages and responds by sending response messages back to the sender. So in order to exchange messages between the process, we have client and server process. As we know there are two processes are required for network application. One is client process which initiates the communication. And the second one is, server process, which waits for receiving the requests from the clients. If you consider the web application, 
Browser acts as a client process and web server acts as a server process. And in P2P file sharing system, the peer downloading the file will be a client and the peer uploading the file will be a server. The interface between the process and the computer network. As we know message need to send from one process to other process through application layer and transport layer. So to have in connection between application layer and transport layer, we use an interface which is called as socket. And this socket is also referred as application programming interface API between application layer and transport layer. As you can see in the diagram, process are controlled by developer and TCP with buffers, variables are controlled by operating system. Addressing process To have a communication between processes, we use addresses. To identify the receiving process, two pieces of information need to be specified. First one is IP address of the host and second one is port number which specifies the receiving process. Normally IP address of two versions. IPv4 of 32 bit length and IPv6 of 128 bit length. Next is port address is of 16 bit length consisting of 65,536 ports. Usually 0 to 1024 are well known port address. For example, HTTP uses port 80. FTP uses port 21. And SMTP for mail transfer uses port 25, 587, 465. The combination of both IP address and port address is called as socket address. Transport services available to applications. Reliable data transfer. In order to have a effective communication, data must be transferred without any loss. Reliable data transfer ensures that the data will transfer from sender to receiver without any data loss. These are used by loss-sensitive applications, such as instant messaging application, email etc. Second service is throughput. Some of the application requires fixed throughput in order to have an effective communication. Throughput is basically the rate at which sender process delivers data to receive a process. The application which use these services are called as bandwidth sensitive applications. Like multimedia application, video streaming etc. Next service is timing, which provide timing guarantees. Some of the real-time interactive applications like live gaming etc. uses this type of service. Next is security. It provides confidentiality between two process by encrypting data at sender process and decrypting at receiver process. It maintains the data integrity. And it also provides endpoint authentication. Requirements of selected network applications. The given table shows the requirements of some selected network applications. As you consider file transfer applications, email, web documents and instant messaging, these are loss sensitive applications. So no data loss in this applications. They are elastic in nature, that means, they can cope up with the available throughput and these are not time sensitive applications. If you consider video conferencing, internet telephony, audio video streaming, live gaming, these are loss tolerant. That means minimum loss of data can be tolerated and it requires some fixed throughput like few kbps. And even they are time sensitive that means that data need to be received by receiver within minimum time. Transport services provided by the Internet. We have two important protocols running in the transport layer, that is TCP and UDP. Internet provides these two transport protocols for applications. TCP Transmission Control Protocol and UDP User Atar Gram Protocol. Some of the services given by TCP are since TCP is connection oriented, when transferring data, there is a handshaking procedure. 
It provides reliable data transfer which ensure that the data is delivered without any data loss. And even TCP provides some congestion control mechanism. To provide security for connection, we can use SSL secure socket layer to secure data. Unlike TCP, UDP does not provide more services. It is a connectionless as there is no handshaking procedure. Since it is connectionless, it provides unreliable data transfer service. There is no congestion control mechanism. So that is why UDP is a lightweight protocol.